Good evening to our global audience and many thanks for tuning in to this week's last edition of Primetime News where we will be unpacking headline grabbing events unfolding within and beyond Namibian borders. I'm Salima Shumwefeleni Masipa. Leading tonight's bulletin, the Ministry of Health and Social Services is monitoring the new COVID-19 variant, Eris, reportedly found in 50 countries, including neighboring South Africa, as of 8 August. Linnea Dishena compiled our lead report. In an interview with NAMPA on Thursday, Minister of Health and Social Services Executive Director Ben Nangombe explained the new variant is a sub-variant of the Omicron lineage and has not been identified in Namibia as yet. Nangombe said, Namibia is monitoring the situation closely and that at this point they have not identified that sub-variant in Namibia, but should they pick it up, they will inform the nation accordingly. There is no need to panic. The ministry is observing the situation. He explained that according to the World Health Organization, the Eris variant does not necessarily result in severe complications. Ngombe said the ministry's response measures in terms of case finding, surveillance and other measures to respond to the variants are ready to respond appropriately. He further encouraged individuals displaying symptoms that are consistent with the COVID-19 to get tested at the public health facilities countrywide. Swabbing for COVID-19 is still happening and those presenting consistent COVID-19 symptoms should make use of the public health facilities. Reporting for Primetime News, Ishmael Mukvonda. The Namibia Financial Institution Supervisory Authority, NAMFISA, held a media symposium earlier today in the capital. The symposium saw NAMFISA outlining the tenets of the Consumer Credit Bill, which seeks to promote fair, transparent and responsible conduct in the consumer credit market by ensuring that transparency and full disclosure of information are upheld. Let's listen in. What we are busy with with this project, we want to make the visa operationally efficient. That's all. That's what we want to do. By integrating our operations, streamlining our processes, centralizing our data, digitalizing our processes and operations. That's what we are doing. In essence, is that we want to use technology to deal with our processes that I can just click a button and say yes, this is what I want. And also that, for example, you as journalists, instead of asking Vicky and say, Vicky, is this entity registered? You just click a button, you can see, oh, this entity is not registered with the officer because you can get the information yourself. That becomes more efficient and a productive way of using your time and my time. That's what ERP is all about. So with this ERP, we want for ourselves that we can make informed decisions that are evidence-based because we have all the information. And at the end of it all, we want to make Namibia sustainable, financially sustainable, that we utilize our resources optimally because it's limited. That is ERP. On to developments in the health sector. The United States President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief will invest approximately 840 million Namibian dollars towards orphans and vulnerable children in eight identified HIV prevalent regions of Namibia. Speaking at the announcement ceremony on Thursday, PEPFAR Namibia Deputy Principal for USA Tamara Cox said the new five-year REACH Namibia program will operate in eight regions where 80% of the population of orphans and vulnerable children are due to HIV and AIDS. Let's listen in. So it's my honor and pleasure to be here again with you today to announce a new five-year PEPFAR funded USA program to reach vulnerable children and youth, to provide health services, and to keep them <coughs> AIDS free. In line with this objective, this program is appropriately named, get this, Reach Namibia. I'll say that again, Reach Namibia. I love that name. <laughs> reach Namibia operates in eight regions where 80% of the population reside. 
The children and youth are made vulnerable by HIV in these regions and will experience improved health and social services to prevent contracting AIDS, I'm sorry, HIV, and to live an AIDS-free life. What the REACH program is going to do is further support these interventions in the regions that have been identified, and they have been identified because of the high burden of HIV infections uh, that have been recorded. I want to underscore the fact that what we have been doing, particularly through the support of U.S. government agencies, is the strengthening of gathering, collation, interpretation, and application of data. Moving on to some science and tech-related developments. Huawei Telecommunication Technologies launched these seeds for the Future Program 2023 at the Namibia University of Science and Technology, NAS campus in the capital earlier today. Primetime News producer Ndamona Kanganjera was on the ground and produced this insert. NAS has created a vibrant and engaging learning environment for all students across uh, all disciplines thereby delivering high quality, responsive and flexible student experiences with high level of student satisfaction. This contributes to a robust and agile teaching and learning spaces. It is for this specific reason that NAST, MTC and Huawei envision a smart campus that will embrace and enhance an engaging experience for our students. Today, I'm pleased to say that soon we will have a smart classroom set up here as HTTPS in partnership with Huawei and MTC. The classroom will be instrumental to the implementation of Huawei-led programs such as SNPs for the Future and the Huawei ICT Academy. I should categori categorically state that SITS for the Future is a defining project for Namibia's digital transformation journey. NAST is passionate about this program and is dedicated to seeing it being rolled out successfully. Honorable Minister, I am informed that there are 25 students in NAST, UM and UNAM, and the Office of the First Lady is one economy foundation that are participating in the first program. I would sincerely like to employ your students uh, to capitalize on this opportunity and ensure that you acquire the relevant knowledge for the future. Take full advantage of this unique opportunity. Stay tuned for the business segment. Welcome to Primetime Biz segment where business and economics make headlines. The energy sector kickstarts the sector. Petroleum Commissioner Maggie Shino noted Namibia has become an oil and gas exploration hotspot with some of the world's biggest drilling rigs currently operating offshore in the Orange Basin. She made this statement at the Namibia Oil and Gas Conference. 
We are today at a stage where we only have the discoveries. Right now, history is being made in Namibia because for the first time, we are having four drilling rigs operating in the Namibia water right now. We have the Mira, we have the Tungsten, we have the Voyager, we have the Bolster. They are all operating in the Orange Basin, trying to apprise them for us to get the data that we need to see. How much can this well, how much, can, how much of this oil can we be able to flow to the surface so that then we can be able to uh, produce commercially? With this information, it will take us another six months for us to gather all the data. And after these six months, we will then be able to know the, 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 the size of the accumulation and how much we can be able to produce so that then we can be able to develop this field. Infrastructures need to be built. We need up to from between one and seven years. The question then remains is when does this one first year start? And that is a challenge that we, unfortunately, I will not be able to tell you today, but I know exactly where we stand. But because of the market, we are not going to say it. Once we have developed the infrastructures that we need, it's the only time then we can be able to see the first oil. And our production profile for Namibia for this field is earmarked that each and every one of these fields has the potential to be able to produce for at least 25 years. Erongo Red Chief Executive Officer Tino Hanabeb has urged residents to strongly guard against theft and vandalism of electricity infrastructure, saying it disrupts the smooth provision of electricity. Hanabeb, during the launch of the DRC Informal Settlement Electrification Project in Swakopmund on Thursday, noted that theft and vandalism of copper wires cost the electricity distributor over 1.7 million Namibian dollars in 2022 and 2023 respectively. Let's listen in. But over and above that, we have noted extensive amount of uh, theft and vandalism that took place. And in 2022, uh, 1.7 million uh, uh, dollars, Namibian uh, dollars of um, services or goods, electrical infrastructure, kiosks, you know, people simply drive and they bump, right? The kiosks are standing, they just pull out because the, the sand is a bit soft. And people are just doing that. The other still the copper and all of those things are happening. Even the, the regional councillor was calling me, you know, on my first day when I came in the office. I do not know whether he was threatening me or asking for help. But nonetheless, we are, we are here. So therefore, I would really like to ask you to, and I believe that when, when you have a committed board that understand that even though we did not plan for it, uh, together with the chairperson and the board, they then said, look, these people are already close enough. Let's, um, let's come in and do something and let's, let's approve that. And that concludes our top news segment for tonight. Up next is your weekend weather forecast, followed by the Economics Roundup.
Welcome to Sport Planet, your go-to segment for all things sporting action. The segment begins in the boxing ring. AC Boxing Academy owner, trainer and promoter Emmanuel Ims Moses says his camp is going to make an offer to Namibia's super featherweight boxer Nathaniel Nati Kakololo to face flame special one Nangolo. AC Boxing Academy will be hosting its second boxing bonanza of the year in Vintuk later this year on the 14th of October. Speaking at a media conference in the capital on Thursday, Moses noted he will ensure the Kakololo and Nangolo fight takes place. On to some football. Theo Walcott, one of the outstanding young English talents of his generation, announced today he has retired from professional football at the age of 34. In an 18-year senior career, the winger made more than 560 club appearances for Southampton, with whom he started and ended his career, Arsenal and Everton scoring 129 goals. He was controversially included in then-England manager Sven Goran Eriksson's squad for the 2006 World Cup without having played international football. But he went on to become both the youngest player to represent England in a senior men's international and at the age of 19 score a hat-trick for the national side. Stand by for your sports roundup. note we have come to the end of the week's broadcast many thanks for always tuning in and much appreciated for your viewership another warm reminder to subscribe to our channel for happenings around us our channel additionally flights multi-themed formats that air periodically so be sure to catch those as well not forgetting to like share and engage with us in the comment section your feedback is invaluable to us it's been a pleasure being in your company from myself, Salima Shumwefe Lady Masipa, and the entire creative team behind the scenes. Have a blessed weekend and good night.